All right, let's talk about planks. Just like burpees, I do love planks. They're one of my favorite um, total body and core exercises. So um, we actually did these in class today. We did a full minute plank, um, regular plank, then we had a 15 second rest, and then we did side planks. So technically we did two minutes of planks, but we're gonna talk about them again anyway. So for those of you in class, you checked your box. Um, so planks, <laughs> you have lots of variety. We've talked about planks many, many times before. Every single instructor probably does planks in their classes. So you've probably done these, you've probably had some good instruction on them, but I just wanna go through some of the um, tips again. You know, just like your push-ups, just like I showed in the burpee video the other day, you can elevate your plank to uh, make it a little easier on you because when you take the elevation up, you're taking some of the um, body weight off of the hands, putting it towards the legs, and it just makes it feel a little bit easier. It's a little less work on the core as well. Um, so you can always hands onto a step, a bench, a chair, a counter, a wall. I mean, you could hold your plank right here. This, this is still a plank. It's just elevated. So find your level. That's your first thing is to find your level. If you're going to come all the way down to the ground, you still have lots of options here. So your basic plank, hands are right up under the, or wrists are right under the shoulders. So I'm stacking my shoulders, my elbows, my wrists. My hips through my um, shoulders is not one long line. So I'm not letting my hips dip down here and I'm not sticking them up in the air. I want to shift my shoulders over my wrist, nice long line. My crown, the crown of my head is lengthening straight out from the spine as well. I'm looking out in front of my hands. So you don't want to look back at your hands. You don't want to look back at your feet or your knees because then you're getting everything out of alignment. So you want that nice long line here. Now, as you see, I put a knee down there so I could lift a hand. Your option from here is to drop the knees. Everything stays the same. So I didn't shift my weight back. I'm still shifting my hips forward, finding that plank. Feet could relax down. You can pull the knees uh, or pull the feet up so that you're kind of on the, the meatier part above the kneecap if that's more comfortable for you. The one thing you don't want to do is this. We're not crossing the legs because that cocks one hip a little bit higher. So if you're going to have the feet up so that you're on the meaty part of the, of the thigh, then they're still separate. Or you have them down, or you have the toes tucked, or you're up here. Now again, you have options. You could put one knee down and one leg up, just like in your push-ups. It takes a little pressure off, makes it a little bit easier without going full knee down modification. So that's always an option. And maybe the cats will come join you. I do love to be up on the toes. I like being up high because it gives me more range of motion for doing movements. But if you're going to be holding for a long period of time, coming down on the forearms is a really, really good option. And here's why. When you're like this, muscle. Your muscles are straining to hold you up. When you come down here, you're being supported mostly by the bone. Your muscles are still working, obviously, but you got bone supporting you instead of all muscle joint holding you up. So coming down, everything else stays the same. My hips through my shoulders is one nice long line. If I need to drop my knees, I drop them straight down, but nothing else changes. My er, um, elbow is still directly under my shoulder. My eyes are looking out about where my fingertips are now, and I'm just holding. Ideally, you want to <laughs> stay here and not bring the hands together. Again, just helps with alignment of shoulders and everything. But I mean, if you do this, it's not the end of the world. So those are kind of your options as far as holding a static plank, all right? If you want, like me, I don't like to just hold all the time. I like to do some kind of movement. One, it distracts me from the length of time that I'm holding something. Um, but it also, you know, it adds a, a challenge for the core to keep you balanced. Now, I'm not suggesting that you add movement. I'm just going to show you a few little options. If in the middle of your, if you say, I'm going to go for a full two minutes straight, and you're kind of like getting in your head and worrying about the time, think about some kind of little movement to take your mind off the time until you hear that buzzer. So, if
if you're up here. Now, the wider the feet are when you're up, the more stable you are. The more narrow the feet are, the less stable you are when, you're, when we're talking about adding movement. I usually have my feet about hip width. Now, you could, I'm going to actually turn a little bit this way. You could shoulder tap. Now, I want you to notice there is a slight shift of my weight side to side, but I'm not doing this. We're not rotating. We're keeping everything square to the floor, and I'm tapping. I'm not looking at my shoulders. I'm not looking at my hands. I'm looking at the floor in front of me. You also have the option, knee tap, or tap a foot out to the side, or reach to the front, to the side, or some combination of all of that. You can hear my, um, my breathing a little bit heavier. It is a lot harder holding that core when you add those little tiny movements. And your little tiny movement could just be, or a little tap right in front of you. It doesn't have to be a full lift and tap the shoulder or a full lift out in front. Just some little something. One, it's gonna distract you from the time and you're gonna be like, focus on what's my movement? What am I holding still? How am I staying um, centered and not twisting the hips and the shoulders around? Um, and it also, it's gonna, it's gonna challenge your core a little bit more. So you're gonna pull that belly button in tight, tuck the tailbone a little bit. I didn't mention that before, but we're not doing this arching. We're not twerking. We're gonna tuck that tailbone in, just like in your plank. Adam talked about a lot of these same things in, in not plank, in your push-up. Tuck the tailbone in, engaging your core, and hold. Or add your taps. Just, we're not doing this. If you feel that your body has to rock side to side to be able to pick up your hand, stop moving, hold still. Now with your planks, just like everything else, you can do it in chunks. Do 30 seconds, four times. Try to hit a whole minute like we did in my class today. Um, a whole minute actually goes by fairly fast as long as you're not focused on the time. So, you know, you want to try to go two minutes. Have a book in front of you to read. Put some funny video on or something to distract you, um, you know, on your phone or on the and not on the TV because, I mean, you don't want to be looking up. You need whatever it is you're looking. Think about when you're down on your forearms about um, forearms width away or distance away. That's where you want whatever your eyes are going to look at um, because you don't want to be looking down. You don't want to be cranking the neck up. You want to be able to look right there. And then have your timer where you can maybe turn your face to the side a little bit to see it, but that you're not staring at it the whole time because if you're staring at it the whole time, you're going to be obsessing about the time, and that's not what we want to do. If you have any other questions about planks, feel free. I have thousands of planks that I could offer you up. Um, feel free to come to class and try out some of the variations that we do in there. And then I will see you next time. Make sure you check that box. Bye.